I'm sorry I got you up for nothing on your day off, sir. Only we weren't sure whether it was suicide or not at first. It was the leaves that fooled us, you see. The leaves, sir. They really screwed us up. After that wind last night, they'd almost covered the girl and we naturally thought that somebody had tried to conceal the body. I couldn't find night duty CID at the time. There was nothing else I could do but have you called out. It wasn't until after I found the bottle of tablets at her side that I... Well, you'd already left home by then, sir, and as you were coming straight here, there was no way I could get in touch with you. It was too late. I'm sorry, sir. I really am. There was nothing else I could do. What? Well, I did do right, didn't I, sir? Calling you out, I mean. I know suicide is a uniform job, but it really did seem a bit more serious than that at first. Oh, and if you need Sergeant Cryer, sir, he's back at the station. And uh, sorry, right here. He's taking a statement from the man that found the body. He's taking his dog for a walk, actually. The man that found her. And the dog sniffed it out. Oh, did I mention, sir, Inspector Deeping's being called out. He's going to take the case over, where sir. Where is it, Ackland? Sir? The note, where is it? The note, sir? Yes, they always leave one. Where is it? I don't know of any note. I didn't search the body, sir. I kept strictly to regulations. First step at the scene of the crime, everything cordoned off and nothing touched, except the bottle of tablet she was holding. <laughs> sir! First time I've seen her face properly. She looks so young. Oh, it must have been something desperate to have. I suppose it was over a man, it usually is, isn't it? Does she give a reason at all, sir? Read it yourself. Oh, it doesn't feel right reading a letter addressed to somebody Stop else. Waffling, Eckland. To my loving brother Rick, I leave my boy George records, souvenirs, and concert badges. I hope he understands. Please forgive me, Mum and Dad, for the shame That's I... That's enough. It's parents out there, you know. I still think they got a daughter. Well, a bit screwy. But a daughter, nevertheless. Well, sir, sir, do you want me to tell Inspector Deep? You know the suicide procedure. Just get on with it. Stop wasting valuable time. Look up the face. That man's a bloody pig. I don't know. You've got to feel quite lightly. If that would be me dragged Galloway out of bed, he would have my guts for garters. Well, it must be because you're a woman. Oh, don't you start that old nonsense. I get enough of that crap from everybody else. If you seriously think I get any different treatment, you're mistaken, Sonny Jim. Well, just look around you. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean anything. I was only joking. Yeah, well, just look around you. Call this a joke? There's a stiff line down there, a moody D.I. What's happened to all the good things in life? You tell me. Oh, I'm sorry, I just didn't know you felt so strongly about it, yeah, that's well, all. Yeah, that's the trouble with you, man. You don't. Oh, I'm seriously thinking about jacking it all in before it's too late. I don't want to turn into one of those hardened cows. Put your papers in. Resign. Yeah. You don't want to do that, Jim. You're, you're a good copper. Everyone says so. You see, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? 
don't do anything too rash. Don't have a chat with Sergeant Cry. I mean, he'll put you straight. Go on. For me. Yeah, I'll think about it. For God's sake, I want to get home. Thanks, Duff. Over now. Ackland here. Any news of Inspector Deeping yet? Over. Hello, 643. Inspector Deeping's reported slip. Sergeant Cryer now dealing. ETA 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Over and up. Oh, what a shrewd man that Deeping is. I bet Cryer's well pleased. Thanks, Duff, kid. What a waste of life. Yeah. I suppose at that age she thought she knew what it was all about. Look, I'd better get back to the station. I'll, I'll make a start on tracing the parents or else Sergeant Cryer will never get off duty. Well, that's a job I don't fancy at all. What job? Well, telling the parents. So I'd, if I were you, I'd leave that to Cryer. I mean, he's more used to it. Yeah, well, there are some jobs you can't avoid. I'll see you when I see you, June. Uh, June? Look, if it's any help, he might save some time. It's a squat. Hey? Well, the address on the door is a squat. How do you know? Well, we had an inquiry there. A month ago, um, there's a red sports car. It's a right expensive job. It was involved in a damage only. It failed to stop. Well, the people in the other car thought they saw the driver come out of that address. Well, I thought it was a bit funny at the time because nobody of the car that's going to live in a squat, are they? That's all I need—a bloody squat. Oh, it's no good moaning about it. I might as well go straight there. I'll see if anybody knows where the parents live. I'm glad this is the last sodding day of night duty. Well, don't worry about it, June. Look, it's just a bad patch you're going through. You'll be all right. Got a third nut in the graveyard, ain't you, Gov? Young girl, I am. There's another one, come to the big city. All think the bleeding streets are paved with gold. When they find out it's Yorkstone, it's too bleeding late. Some people have all the luck. Yeah, will you be me? Don't your bloody people ever suss a situation out right? I'm sorry you got lumbered with one of the last this morning, Roy. But Ackman did right. Could have been a murder at that stage. This was going to be my first day off in Yonks. And your WPC couldn't get on that bloody phone quick enough, could she, eh? She'd have stayed on the scene for a few more minutes. She'd have figured it out straight away. Suicide. Not murder. But why don't you go home? You're working too many extra hours. Are you back on the fags? <sighs> Didn't buy that, just one of Ted Roaches. And you've got that silly shirt on again, haven't you? You've been out clubbing it last night. Got your brothel creepers on, have you? You look bloody awful. You know something? You're beginning to sound like my bloody missus. Do you know that? Look, there's no need for you to be here now, is there? Hey, I didn't sort this lot out. My night duty team have just gone on for the second time. And I called them back for one reason only. To give them a bollocking for not being available when this body was found. And what did they tell me? They tell me they were here all the time, upstairs. Is that the kind of sorting out you had in mind? It's lack of communication, Roy. 
Now, I've had a word with the bloke on the comms desk. It happened. Yeah, well, Ackman should have had a word with the bloke on the communications desk before pulling me out of bed. She panicked. Should have known better, Robert. Sorry, do you want one? No, 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 it's all right, mate. Cheers. All right, so she was a bit impetuous. But your mob couldn't be found at that moment, that's all. And she didn't think to check in the canteen. Right, it's one of those obvious things that anyone could overlook. Make my men look stupid. Oh, come off it, Roy. Look, if it had been a murder, you'd have been the first one to complain if you hadn't been called out. Plod stomping all over your ground. Now, you can't have it both ways. Now, come on, eh? Go easy on her. She's not a bad kid. She's got her annual qualification report coming up in a couple of weeks. Now, I don't want her going up for her appraisal interview thinking she's landed herself in it because of this morning. Could tip the scale, so to speak. Frightened I might put the boot in or something. No, just give her a bit of encouragement. Say a few kind words now and again, no matter how much it hurts. I wouldn't mind a few kind words now and again yourself. What? I'll swear like you. All right, Roy. Got a bit of aggro at home. Could be a father, eh? Come in. OK, Roy? Detective Inspector Galloway here. Yes, love. Yeah, I know all that, but I didn't expect to get called out in the early hours, did I? Look, I'll be back in about an hour, all right? Yeah. Yeah, I've already been reminded it's my day off. I'll see you in about an hour, all right? Look, I can't talk to her anymore. Look, I'm very busy. I've got to go, all right? Bloody women! Sorry, Roy. That was something I forgot to tell you. Your missus rang earlier. I promised I'd give you a message. I haven't dropped you in it, have I? I'm sorry about this morning, sir. Well, you asked me to keep in touch, let you know what was happening. Come on in. Tell us what you got. Well, her name was Amanda Jenkins. She was 18 years old, lived in a squat down by the docks. Apparently she left home about six months ago against her parents' wishes and came to London with ideas of being a fashion model. Where's home? Norfolk, sir. Dad's a farmer, Nathaniel Atkinson. It's her stepfather, actually. I'll notify him. Leave it to me, June. No, I've already done it, Sarge. I informed the local police, and I thought it'd be easier if they went round and break the news over the phone. Well, I did do right this time, didn't I, sir? Yeah, good thinking. Yeah. Thanks, Sarge. Why did she do it, Ackland? Did you glean anything on that? Most of the information I got, sir, was from her best friend, a girl called Rachel Dimmock who lived in the squat with her. Now, she was too upset to tell me a great deal, except to say that apparently Amanda was involved in some kind of show business. She wouldn't go into detail, except to say that Amanda didn't like it very much. She used to come home every night in tears, apparently. Who else lives in this squat? About nine, ten young fellas. Hard-working lads. Keep the place very clean and tidy. It's not at all what you'd expect. Young, eh? About as old as you, are they, Acklam? Yes, sir. Sort of. I'm not very impressed with WPCs at the moment. But I don't think it would be a bad idea if we took Ackland off normal duties, let her follow this through to the end. Probably come up with more answers than you, Sarge, you know. Being in the same age, generation gap and all that, if you know what I mean. Oh, I don't know, Roy. It could be difficult. Well, she's on night duty, really. I don't mind working through, Sarge, if it'll help you. Got a post-mortem fixed yet? Half twelve. You realise this means going to the post-mortem with Sergeant Cryer? Well, yes, sir. I've got to do it sometime, haven't I? All right. My advice to you, then, is to go and have a shower, get freshened up, get changed, and get some food inside you, because it'll be the last you have for a while. Yes, sir. Um, 
Sunnyhill Police Station. needs my personal attention, see Sergeant Roach. Sorry. Uh, there's a young lady at the counter, sir. She's the dead girl's squat mate. Wants to speak urgently to someone in charge of the case. Rachel? Good luck. Detective Inspector Galloway. What can I do for you? There's a few things I think I should tell you, Inspector, about Amanda. I don't know about you, love, but uh, I could do with a cup of coffee. Come on, friend. Haven't done one of these before, have you gone? No, Sarge. I feel quite cold. Oh, don't worry. It's all in the mind. Just a job of work. What a job. Smoke. Yeah, it's all right. I'll make do one of these. I'm giving up, really. I didn't tell the policeman this morning, not because I didn't want to, you understand, but because I felt that whatever happened, happened. I mean, telling her I wasn't going to bring Amanda back, was it? Then after she'd gone, the policewoman, that is, I went through this conscience thing. I had to tell someone. I felt I couldn't hold back any longer. That's why I rushed here, full of good intentions, going to pour my heart out. Only now I, I'm not so sure it's such a good idea. Perhaps, Mr Galloway, I've been a bit hasty. Better to let things be. Sleeping dogs lie and all that. Now listen, young lady, and you listen good. There's a lot of things I'd like to be doing right now, instead of sitting here listening to this load of crap you're giving me. Now, you said you come here to tell me something. Something urgent couldn't wait, you said. So start talking, madam, and don't mess me about any more. She was on heroin. There was nothing I could do to help her. All right. Now, I want you to tell me everything about Amanda. Every little detail. Her likes, her dislikes. Anything you can remember, Rachel. I want to know everything. I'm going to come on through. He's interviewing at the moment, but uh, if you'd like to wait in his office, he shouldn't be too long. Thank you. There we go. Yes, well, what we have here is a healthy-looking young female in her late teens. Any old scars, George? No, there's a little bruising on the left forearm, just on the elbow. OK. I'll come back to that later. Length, George? Five two. Length, five foot two inches. Right. I think we'll take the organs out first. Scalpel, please. Everything? 
What else do you want at this stage, other than the cause of death? It's not for me, sir. It's for Detective Inspector Galloway. Ah, Galloway, is it? <laughs> I'm afraid so. Should have known. Ghastly man. Sir? Good CID man. He'll probably be taken over the investigation when he learns that she was mainlining heroin. We want to know everything. Yes, well, of course, we yeah. can't be positive it was heroin until we've carried out further tests. But you can inform your Inspector Galloway, I'm 90% sure. You can also tell him, Sergeant, that he'll have to be satisfied that death was caused by an excessive overdose of barbiturate. She was three months pregnant. Oh, no. There is evidence of venereal disease. And if he's still not satisfied, you can throw an ingrowing toenail on the left foot. My report will follow, all right? All within the space of six months. Poor girl. If only she'd talk to somebody. Wouldn't have made the slightest difference. That's the tragedy of youth. It's wasted on the young. Gordon Bennett. Oh, no. George Burnett, actually. Let's just put a lunch. Oh, God. She was the best friend I ever had, Mr. Galloway. She was beautiful, stunning looker. Everything I'd wish to have been. What about the couple with the red sports car she met? Tell me more about them. There's not much more I can tell you, really. Except they picked Amanda up somewhere. Maybe she went knocking on the wrong doors. I don't know. You see, she had this burning ambition to be a fashion model. Nothing else mattered. Anyway, they told her that they knew influential people. People who knew people. And they arranged the photo session, yes? I'll never forget the morning she left. She looked as if she'd stepped out of one of those magazines. Couldn't fail. She got back to the squat that evening. All she wanted was to cry. She couldn't stop. She wouldn't tell me what had happened, Mr. Galloway, and I was her closest friend. And what about the heroine? That came later. It was all part of the same scene. She was hooked. They were the suppliers. There was only one way out. And she took it. All right, all right. Listen, uh, I'll get us another cup of coffee and uh, go somewhere quieter. Favour, Sarge. It's a smell, isn't it? I'll never get used to it. I need to clink you for days. If Galloway ever suggests I go to a post mortem again, gag me, will you? I'm only trying to be helpful. Get you more involved with the job? Yeah, getting back at me more like. A sadistic streak, that's what he's got the bastard. Ah, imagination. Yeah, anyway, it was you that volunteered. Oh, yes, sir. Me, sir. Please, sir. I'll volunteer, sir. Let me do it, sir. Bloody milk monitor. Come on, clunk click. I'm putting in my papers, I've had enough. Oh, yeah. Eventually, I managed to draw out bits and pieces, very slowly. She was making films. Blue films. Heavy porn. So that's what this is all about. I'm sure. All right. Let's see if I've got this straight. All we've got is a brief description of our mystery couple. No names, no addresses. Our only lead to them is a red sports car, no registration number, no make, yes? And a large dog that rides in the back. Enormous, huge great thing. Have you got a photo of Amanda? Yes, I have. Here it is. It was taken at Tower Bridge. It's not very good of me, I'm afraid. Can I borrow this? Yes, of course. This will be very helpful. Come on, I'll show you to the door. I'm 
just fed up with everything. Looking after snotty-nosed kids, searching poxy women, drunks, nobody else to touch with a barge pole. It's all the most dirty, disgusting jobs you can think of. Good old actor and she'll do it. Well, not any bloody more she won't. You're exaggerating, you know that. Oh, no, I'm not, Sarge. Well, you tell me why it is that every time there's a tasty job on, I'm the one who ends up on the communications desk. We're not on the communications desk today, are you? Dead bodies, post-mortems, VD, drugs. Oh, what kind of a person am I going to be in ten years' time? I'm missing out somewhere, Sarge. Don't you understand that? Right. When we get back to the Nick, I don't want to hear any more about putting your papers in. I've made just up my... Just listen! Right? You just get your things together, book off, and then take a few days off and get yourself sorted out. Oh, yeah, and let Galloway think I've bottled out. No thanks, Sarge. Only when you come back, I don't want to hear any more of this resigning nonsense, all right? He'll understand. Oh, he'll understand, like hell he will. All right, Sarge. But I'm not going on leave. I'm going to see this job through. I am not going to give Galloway the satisfaction of being right. That's my girl. Crown and Ackland back, yeah? Uh, no, Gov. But you've got company in your office. Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson. Oh, Tom. Oh, and by the way, your missus rang. Oh, sorry. I better give her a ring. Remember, hello. Remember, don't lose your rag. Don't let him niggle you, and don't see him that you might regret later. After a bit of leave, you'll feel different about everything. Mark my words, you'll see everything in a completely different light. Is it all right to have some evil thoughts about him? Really wicked thoughts, not at all becoming to a woman police constable. Sure, but well, with your luck, you'd probably enjoy them. Right, I don't think so. Not the ones I had in mind. I'll arrange for someone to take you down to the hospital mortuary to formally identify your daughter. It's not a very pleasant experience, but something that nevertheless has to be done. My advice to you then, Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson, for what it's worth, is that you should take the next train home. There's nothing left for you to do here at the moment. I think we'd like to go and see where she lived, Inspector. Perhaps we could talk to some of her friends. I think it might help. Anything you say, I'll get someone to fix a hotel accommodation up for you. But I'm hoping you change your minds. Would you excuse me a moment? What, you were going home? So did I. Mum and Dad? Yeah. Keep your voices down. She was on heroin, you know. So I found out. I am pregnant and dosed up. And it gets worse. Blue Films. Star of stage, screen and video was our Amanda. Oh, my God. What did the Atkinsons know? No. And I want it kept from as long as possible. With any luck, they won't have to know. They got enough on their plate as it is. So what happens now, Roy? Your department take over? Yeah, but I want you to stay on. Both of you. You're familiar with a job and I haven't got time to brief someone else now. This is what we're looking for. A couple. Late thirties, early forties. Bloke, nondescript, got nothing on him. But a woman, she's a bit chic, blonde, slim. Other than that, they drive a red sports car and they've got a big dog in the back. And not one of those things on a piece of elastic either. A bloody big thing. Is that all of it? That's it, not a lot. But I might have a shortcut. Carver. Carver said he had an inquiry at the squat about a flash sports car. It was involved in some kind of an accident. I mean, I'm just thinking it might be the same one. I can ring him and find out. If Carver knows anything, I want him in here right away. But sir, he's off now for a few days. I don't give a toss! If Carver knows anything, I want him in here now! June. Ackland! There's a phone over there. And you wonder why I get pissed off. 
and work in the same office as that moron. Look, go easy on her, why, eh? She's had a bit of a rough day. She's had a rough day, haven't we all? We've all got problems. She wants it rough, she wants to come out of my house. It's engaged, sir. Well, keep trying. Look, Bob, if we can find that couple today, we can hit them straight away with any luck. We can drum up enough charge to put them away for a long time without dragging that girl's name through the dirt. It's not going to be easy, though, Roy. We won't ruin their lives anymore. They're going to have enough problems facing up to what they already know. I should have given her more love. <laughs> Showed her more affection. Oh, I shouldn't have let her leave home. I should have tried harder. Don't talk like that. There's nothing you can have done. Really? Oh. Nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pull a lot of strings, Roy. I know. That's why if I can sew it up today, I'll know which way I can manoeuvre. Uh, sir, I've got Carver on the line. Do you want him in a uniform or civvies? In his bloody wife rants for all I care. Just get him here. What's all that about? Oh, right. Forget it. Yes. Now look, you said you had a shortcut. Remember Fat Nicky? Oh, not that naughty. Yeah, Ponce. And he won't talk to you as long as he's got all in his ass. Yeah, but he'll know who's making or pushing the films, won't he? Oh, Evil okay. bastard, Roy. You haven't seen me on a really bad day. Sir, uh, Carver says the sports car's probably the one we're looking for. Go on. It's a red Porsche. It was registered in a false name and address and was involved in a damage-only accident outside the squat. It failed to stop. Or you can put out an AS. No. This is what we'll do. Yeah, hold on. Ackland, you wait for Carver. When he comes, you go to Henry's calf. Tell him I sent you. If that car's been picking up girls, it's a good bet it's been doing it there. Bob? You take the Atkinson to the mortuary to identify the girl, then get them booked up into a hotel. And I'll see you all back here in, say, um, a couple of hours, all right? Right. All right. No, listen, yeah. Jim, Gov, it's cut. your wife. I'm not yeah, here. Is it She's heard your voice. To meet oh, you give here. us a second. Look, love, I'm right up to my eyeballs in it. I don't know, it's up to you. I'll come back just as soon as, all right? She's going where? Yeah, I think that'll be Look, she won't. It'll be all right. Look, I've got to go. Who'd have kids? Come on, let's get on with it. Galloway sent you, you say? Yeah, he thinks you could probably help us. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, she ain't feeling too good. Don't know what's the matter with everyone today. He was acting bleeding strange this morning. Your governor, Galloway, never said a bleeding word. Usually gives me a white rollicking. Yeah, well, you'll be happy to know. He's back to his old self again. Good. Don't like to see a man moping about. You were saying? Yeah, I think she could help us out. Um, he believes you probably know about this car if it has been around here picking up young girls. Red Porsche, eh? I don't know one of these foreign cars from another. There is one I've got in mind. Could be, I suppose. Well, which one is that, I Henry? Mean? I haven't seen it for a while. Young fella. Tasty bit of crumpet, wasn't it? Quite attractive, blonde hair. Wouldn't kick it out of bed, tell you that. Not that I've got much of a chance these days. Well, you don't know where they come from, do you? What area? Not from down this end, son. Tell you what, though. Yeah? Wouldn't like to get on the wrong end of that bleeding big Irish wolfhound they got. Wolfhound? Right, yeah. See you. My day go. Yes. yes, now what can I do you for, mister? Got another lunch, darling. No, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Go on. Not out that way. A nice vodka and orange.
Come on, Nicky. Don't be shy. <laughs> Where's the girl? She's on an extended lunch break. Don't like the sight of blood. You threatened me once too many times, Mr. Galloway. I call you bluff one day. What do you want? You want a drink? I'm going to close you down, Nicky. For good this time. How much you want? I'm going to make sure you don't operate with 100 miles of all gate pump. Why you do this to me? I'm legit. You hate me so much, you want to take the bread from my mouth? Might even get you deported. Now there's a thought. My nurse, you tell me you want something real bad. Mm. A trade. Has to be bad. You want to trade with old enemies, Mr. Galloway. The one on the right. Do you know her? <laughs> Don't mess me about, Nick. You either do, you're done. Come. Come, Mr. Galloway. You sure the girl's in that one, Nicky? Patience, Mr. Galloway. If I say it's the girl, it's the girl. I don't mind spending the afternoon drinking your scotch, pal. But watching a lot of filth is definitely not on my schedule unless it pays off. I'm a very busy man, know what I mean, Nicky? Yeah, of course. You want Nicky should cut his throat, huh? Bugger about? <laughs> you keep your word, Mr. Galloway. Nicky keep his. O'Malley Productions. Let's hope this is the right one. For your sake, Nicky. You will see. When she takes off the mask, you will see. <laughs> she looked so peaceful. Mm. So... I don't want to go. <laughs> I think Mr. Clywheel is right. I don't want to leave her. Close-up on her face when she takes the mask off. The best part. Stop the running best back, Nicky. That's it. Now leave it. It's a pity the film is one of the best, bloody good, you know. I've seen all I want to see. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's with Carver and Ackland. They're having a cup of tea in the canteen. Give him a call, Mike. Tell him I'm back. Yeah, right, Gun. Anything happened? Anything I should know about? Yeah. Your missus rang. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, she said, could you ring her back? Give us a fag, will you? Yeah, sure. This is one of those jobs that affects the neck. No one escapes. Good for the conscience. Good for the soul. Sarge. Governor wants to see you. Right. And it clears the guts out. <laughs> Come on, you two. His Royal Highness requests the pleasure. Thank you. 
just do it yourself. Maybe I'll make yes, leave it to you. I'll come back when you go so the rest of the canteen. Got the biscuits, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Ted, Mike, I want you in on this. Right, first of all, Bob, what about the Atkinsons? Well, she's not taking it too good. She's getting fixed up in a hotel, okay? Unfortunately, no. She's changed her mind and gone back to Norfolk. Good. What about you? You and Carver find out anything? Well, I mean, nothing's going to help us any. Uh, Henry at the calf said he's seen them once or twice, but that was some time ago now. For what it's worth, the dog's an Irish wolfhound. A uh, bleeding big Irish wolfhound. And another lassie. Pardon? Film star. Never mind. So, that's all we've got, yes? Yeah. Right. I want you to make a note of this. O'Malley Video Productions. O'Malley, you got that? Uh-huh. Right, Ted. I want you to check with the pawn squad at the yard, find out if they've got anything at all on this firm, and follow up any subsequent inquiries. Mike, I want you to try the ratings office, social security, etc. I can put out a general search. No, Atkin can do that. I want you to try the drug squad and soft soap customs and excise. You never know, they might come right. up with something. Carver, I want you to give Ackland a hand. There's bound to be a number of offshoots from CRO. Now, I'm going to miss him for about an hour. I'll be back about 4.30. We should have come up with something by then. I'll see you all then. Yeah, it's well, O'Malley, over Oscar, in for Mike. I'm trying to trace O'Malley Productions Alpha. Limited. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh. Obscene publications? No, 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 it's no O'Malley Christian Film Productions. Production. Yeah, well, can you put me through from your end? And there's nothing on O'Malley at all? Well, nothing at yeah, all. Yeah, I know, but... Thank you. Yeah, OK, I'll try to see a little. Yeah, but the link's heroin, so we thought the drug squad. Occurring upstairs, everyone's running around like bleeding blue ass flies up there. Wooden tops and superstars join forces, have they? The word is liaison, Lytton. Fragile, maybe, but liaison. Delicate detente, go. That's what they call it in the papers. Well, you've obviously progressed from page three. Keep it up. We could always do some intellectuals in a department. Thanks, Gov. <laughs> Nothing. Not a sausage. Never had so many negative calls in all my life. Nothing, sir. Oh, come on. There must be something from CRO. Oh, yeah, 15 O'Malley's, but none of them fit our mystery couple. Registry's the same, sir. Nothing. Oh, I don't believe this! Look, sir, I've got an idea. Now, you may think it's ridiculous. I know it's a long shot. Look, stop jabbering. If you've got an idea, let's hear it. Well, what I was thinking, sir, was that if I had a dog like that, and it got lost. My first thought would be to rush down to the Nick and see whether anybody had found it. Would you get my meaning? Name, address, telephone number, they'd be genuine. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, nice one, Drew. Yeah, well, don't congratulate yourselves just yet. It might not have lost a bloody thing. Yeah, well, I did say it was a lost. All right, let's give it a try. You put out an AS to all station officers to check their lost dog book. Say, in the last couple of years, any Irish wolfhounds lost or found. Mark it up urgent. Right, sir. Oh, Ackland. Sir? As you say, it's a, it's a long shot, so if you're right, I'll take back all I said about W plonks. Tell me, you found the bloke called O'Malley. No, that's it. We've been on the wrong track. It wasn't the fella that was called O'Malley. It was the dog. The dog's called O'Malley. Oh, Lord. Ted, can you hear me? Mike. Have you found the entrance yet? Perhaps I can't use the radio yet. Governor, there's a fire escape here worth bearing in mind. Wait a minute now, stand by. Got myself a lovely red Porsche, Gov. It's a beauty. Good lad. I think this is it, all right. But it could be a bit dodgy, Gov. It's one of those uh, intercom things. Stand by. You're a model, okay? You've got an interview tomorrow. You need some tasty snapshots urgently. 
We're still sure we don't need a search warrant for this. Nah, we don't need a W. We're going to get invited in, aren't we? But sir, what if they tell me to go away? Don't take no for an answer. Keep pressing that button. Look, we'll be behind you. Tucked in. As soon as that buzzer goes, we'll be straight in. But sir, I'm Look, never... don't cock it up! Don't worry, sir, I won't. I'll count on you, girl. Cut. Can't you think of anything sexier to do with a 12-inch loofah? Look, a couple of bored slags. All right, let's try it again. And for the money I'm paying you, couldn't you inject just a little feeling into it? Action! Yes, urgent! Well, the photos I got, they reckon they ain't revealing enough, you know what I mean? Who recommended you? Some girl I met. Well, what's all the bleeding questions? Do you want to take them or not? All right. Come on. Can't break in here like this. Get these girls out of here! June? Come on, you. Oh, out. You too. And I'll take the camera. Wouldn't want the jury to miss out on anything, eh? Do you want me to take this one down to the car, Gov? Yeah, go on. Come on. I want to see your warrant for breaking in here. I'm not having this. I want to phone my solicitor. Perhaps we could uh, call into my bank on the way. Right. It's all right. Don't worry, Bob. No, go on. Hit me, please. That's just what you'd like me to do, isn't it, eh? When you stand in that dock tomorrow, there'll be a mark on you. Not a hair. Out of place. I've got connections. You'll see. I've met some dirty, no-good punters in my time. But you and that blundered scumbag, the best. I'm going to make sure personally you get put away long enough to enjoy it. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a young girl who's now laid out on a slab. I'm talking about two proud parents scarf alike. I'm talking about you! Take you out of my sight, Bob. <laughs> you cow son. <laughs> right. Let's have a drink to celebrate. What a good idea, guys. Oh. Hey. Where's a bottle of scotch, Ted? What bottle is that, Dove? I may not have been a DR that long, but uh, wet behind the ears, I am not. What bottle is that, Dove? <laughs> <laughs> there you are. What's the measure, Bob? Oh, as long as you've seen that, yeah, it'll be a long time go. again before you see it. Yeah, 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 Paul, don't go too quick, man. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> Come on, that's it. There we are. Right, here we go. Cheers. We've done a terrific job, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Good health. Oh, that's better. <sighs> for the parents, aren't it? I hope they don't know the truth. Don't worry, they won't. I've got enough charge on this repulsive little firm. Drugs, obscenity, procuring. When I rest, the time I finish screwing them down, Amanda's death will barely reach the headlines. Well, a name won't anyway, I'll see to that. And the Atkinsons? Well, what do you want to get, sir? Life. What a bit of luck. Makes you feel good somehow. When you get a job like this off. You're inclined to forget all those long hours, early mornings, all those cigarettes. One call to the missus. Yeah. No bloody time to sort your own life out. Still, I suppose it's all worthwhile. Don't you think, Acklin? Yes, sir. I suppose so. It's not such a bad job after all. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.